Welcome back to AMS. Today I will show you a story of a 29-year-old top bank manager named Max. Max is an ambitious achiever of his goals, leading to happiness by earning and spending his money in the most lavish ways. Expensive luxury cars, penthouse dwellings, nightclubs, posh girls, parties and drugs became the attributes of his life. He calls his bank office building, the Tower of Mordor. Saying it's homeland of the worldwide corporate evil. He comes to a meeting with his boss and bank director, Conrad, who tells him that he will retire in two months and that he wants to do one huge project before he leaves. Max being an awesome banker, knows he wants to do it just so he can increase credit indexes, as his retirement amount depends on it. But he plays stupid and lets Conrad tell him about the luxury village complex he wants the bank to invest in. That night, Max starts another one of his lavish nights at a vanity fair. He's been around places like this so long that he started to despise it. He talks with everyone, as he's popular among people because of his immense wealth and good look. But he actually thinks all people there are just supposedly strong, supposedly rich, and supposedly famous. His girlfriend Elvira, is also a good-looking and popular fashion model, he joins her in a quick photo shoot. Then they decide to leave, as Vanity Fair seems boring for them. While driving in his car, they snore in some baking soda together, do the business while speeding on a highway, and have another one of adrenaline-packed nights. The following day after work, Max and his girlfriend are having lunch in one of the high-end restaurants. He's visibly bored but discusses with Elvira the fact she always orders salmon but doesn't eat it. It's because she doesn't even like fish, but everyone in the restaurant is ordering it, so she does the same because she doesn't want to look bad. As they're talking, they see strange group of through their window, Elvira calls them clowns that run away from the circus. The same group then enters the restaurant. Young girl Julia, starts yelling to stop the genocide against animals. She approaches Max's table, tells his girlfriend that Chinchilla is a live being too, and she shouldn't be wearing that coat. Then they activate their makeshift bomb, and spray red paint, representing animals' blood over everyone's faces. Except Max's. He found this performance funny and interesting. As he's still laughing at the stunt in his car, his girlfriend is outraged and bursts out on him saying that he's with her only so he can be at the covers of magazines, and that she won't allow him to laugh as she is more valuable to him. He can't take any more of her superficiality. So he breaks up with her and leaves her stranded somewhere on the road. Then he proceeds to a nightclub alone, as that's what he does. There, he sees his old friend Misha. Misha invites him to take some baking soda together in a VIP section, and tells him that he has a business proposal for him. Misha invested a lot of money in his own nightclub, but his partner withdrew and he's stuck now. So he invites Max to join him in the project, and start his own nightclub together with Misha. Max doesn't say yes or no, but proceeds to have fun that night. Next day, Max is in his office, telling his friend Vadim about the nightclub proposal, Vadim is skeptical but also wants to join. His secretary then comes in and tells him that press conference for the millionaire's village starts in 10 minutes. On the way to the conference hall, they see their French associate Alan Garrido, who wishes Max good luck, but Max is suspicious as he knows Garrido hates him. He sees partners from their St. Petersburg bank branch at the conference hall, Velodia and Natalia. Velodia is director of that branch, Natalia is the vice director. He ignores Velodia, but chit chats with Natalia, as he often has sexual intercourse with her when he's traveling for work to St. Petersburg. Natalia hands him a USB, saying there is some interesting stuff for him on there. Max goes to the stage and starts presenting the project, it all goes well until the activist group, that Garrido hired, starts changing his video presentation to animals having fun behind him. Everyone starts laughing and Max is frustrated, but continues his presentation nevertheless. After, they're having a meeting with their French investors. Garrido say that they can't treat seriously a project with such presentation. Max says that it wasn't his presentation, and continues speaking to investors, telling them that this is a risk-free project, as the land is worth more than what they need to invest in the project. Hearing this, investors say that they even like the provocative presentation, and tell Max to keep pushing the project forward. Max is outraged at the team he's leading for allowing something like that to happen. He yells and breaks their office. They admit that it wasn't them who did it and that Garrido often asked about their work. 
Max realizes that it was actually Garrido's setup. He then remembers he saw a girl from the presentation earlier at the restaurant. Then picks up the flare she left at his table and starts researching the activist group. Finds out that they are having a gathering later that night, and decides to visit it himself. Max goes to the bar they're gathering and sits next to a young girl he recognizes. Her name is Julia, she is a 19 years old student. They start talking and finding out more about each other. Max tells Julia that earning money is not that easy, she tells him that fighting for justice isn't easy too. Then Max says that he doesn't believe her and he wants to see it by himself. Later Julia calls him and apologizes for the incident with a presentation, she also invites him for a night walk, which Max accepts. As he's waiting for her with a flower in his hands, the black van stops next to him, with Julia and her team inside. Turns out she invited him to one of their actions, not a romantic walk. They then go on top of a building and start projecting an animation on one of the corporate buildings. Group wanted to send a message, so animation is showing how people go to earn money every day, just to spend it on worthless brands and things. Police then appear and starts chasing the group. Julia and Max go on one side, and escape them. As they're walking and police car starts slowly driving toward them. Max kisses her so the police loses attention from them. Which works, but apparently both Max and Julia enjoyed the kiss. They go back to the bar to celebrate their successful act, then Max orders the most expensive drink and tells the group to stop acting like teenagers. That the world doesn't work the way they think, and if they really want to start a revolution, they need to go on the streets, as the world doesn't want acts, but martyrs. He then leaves, but he can't stop thinking about Julia and their kiss on his way back, as he obviously has feelings for her. Then again he goes to a nightclub with his friend Vadim. He introduces Vadim to Misha, and they start discussing about their nightclub project. They can't agree on the percentage of the shares, as Max and Vadim want more. So Misha tells them they will keep talking tomorrow, as now, they have Colombian baking soda to try. As Max and Vadim are in the toilet, trying Colombian stuff, two guys open the toilet door and hit Max. It turns out those guys are the police. They interrogate Max and Vadim as they want to startle them, and as they are about to arrest them for possession and attempted bribe, Misha shows out of nowhere, talks with the cops outside, and sets the two men free. Max and Vadim don't see this as suspicious, and are just happy to be free. Misha then offers them to find him in the middle regarding the shares, and they happily accept his offer. All three of them then go to see their new club being prepared. It's the most modern nightclub in town. Max and Vadim are thrilled and excited about it, saying it will bring them so much money. As they start enjoying women's company and drugs, they don't see the look Misha is giving to them. But we know, he's up to no good. The next morning, Max remembers the USB Natalia gave him. He checks it out and finds out Garrido, the French associate, is working together with Velodia, that branch's director. He knows they want to take Max's boss's place once he retires. As Max despises them, he decides to go to St. Petersburg and deal with Velodia. He tells his boss, that he will take three days off and go to St. Petersburg to take care of something. Conrad already knows what's happening, and tells Max to be careful, as their project is already on the way, they can't allow it to be stopped by anything now. On his way out, Julia is waiting for him on her bike. She wants to take him somewhere and promises to get him to train station on time. He enjoys the ride, and time spent with her. As that's the only time he's not surrounded by work, money, or fake people. In St. Petersburg, he's having lunch with Velodia. After chit-chatting, Velodia offers him a lot of money to get off his way, but Max replies saying it's nowhere enough for him. He makes Velodia tell him who is his man in Moscow's branch, or he will tell about it to his boss and have him fired. Velodia then admits his rat is Garrido, the Frenchman. Max goes back to Moscow, and first thing he does, is he finds Julia and invites her for a walk. While walking, she tells him that this to her seems like a date. She also tells him this isn't his style, Max cuts her there and invites her to his place. He tells her that she can go through all his stuff, to find out who he really is, then she can decide whether to leave or stay. Max seems to really be changing, he doesn't enjoy talking with his regular friends, about industry news or new cars anymore, it all became too shallow for him. At his work, 
Garrido and Conrad were waiting for him. Garrido starts telling him that he found white powder on his desk, which after exam report turned out to be baking soda. He also tells Max that he researched the land for Millionaire's Village project, which turns out to be the site of a secret ground polygon for chemical munitions during 1930s. And the developer there hasn't ordered any residential projects, because nothing can be built on that ground. He accuses Max of taking the credit money for the project and tells him that he's fired. Max realizes he's been crossed by Conrad and approaches him to confront him because obviously Conrad took the credit money. Conrad tells him that he's sick of his high end mighty fizz, him thinking that he's smarter than everyone. That he's not even planning to retire and that Max should have made his research before doing anything. In the office, everyone's watching Max as he has a breakdown and then Max packs his stuff and makes a speech before leaving. He tells everyone to be happy for him, because their cellmate got a parole. Everyone who has ever worked in any corporation, knows that people really are, ready to walk over others for their own profit. Before he leaves, his secretary approaches his car with bottle of alcohol, and he lets her in. Then we see Max coming home drunk, with Julia sitting there waiting for him. She helps him get to bed and tries to undress him, even though he's so drunk that he insults her. Until she finds his secretary's panties in his pocket. She then leaves, disappointed and angry, and starts crying. Next morning, Max wakes up and finds panties placed on his head, he knows what he did and goes to take a shower and recollect himself, realizing that he will lose everything in his life if he keeps on like this. After the shower, he talks with Vadim who tells him that he's been blacklisted in entire country for attempt of extortion, and that he's lucky they have a nightclub business going on. He tries calling Julia too, but she doesn't answer. While having a drink, an acquaintance approaches Max and starts bragging about the new nightclub business he's starting with, no other than Misha. Max realizes that Misha is about to cross him over as well, and goes to call him immediately, Misha says he's not available, and they can meet tomorrow. Enraged Max, then starts looking for him all over the city, in every nightclub. He finds where he is from one of the Misha's girls and he heads to the hotel he's staying at. He enters his room and sees Misha is having a kinky party going on, with his luggage packed, as he's planning to leave the country in a few hours. Max takes his and Vadim's money, and tells Misha what a piece of garbage he is. At the same time, Vadim arrives at the supposed nightclub location for a partner's meeting, and sees there is nothing they saw from just a couple of nights earlier there. All the other partners Misha took money from start arriving too, and Vadim realizes as well that they've been crossed over. Max joins them as well with Vadim's and his money in his car, but enraged Vadim won't listen to him. He attacks him saying he lost him all his money and asking if he's in it together with Misha. Max then leaves without telling Vadim anything, because he can't believe all his friends only think about money. He decides to give Vadim his part tomorrow, when he cools down and thinks about what he said. He tries calling Julia again that night, but she doesn't answer any of his calls. Following day, Vadim isn't answering his calls, so Max goes to his place to give him his money back. In his apartment, he notices a lot of police officers, slowly walks forward and sees Vadim lying dead on the floor. He committed suicide. Max can't believe what's happening and goes to get drunk in a club, hoping to relieve his agony in alcohol. He gets so drunk that he gets in a fight and ends up sitting next to a club's back entrance. One girl who loved to talk to him before when he had everything, acts like she doesn't know him this time. He wakes up in his car, looks at the money sitting next to him, and decides to give it away. He goes to donate it to Children's Hospital, place Julia once took him to entertain the sick children. Still drinking alcohol, and watching the news, Max sees activist group actually listened to him, and started protests on the street. Knowing Julia will be there, he decides to join them. He finds Julia, but she doesn't even want to look at him. He begs her to talk to him and gives him some time so he can change. But she declines him saying that she doesn't want to be part of his fake life, and tells him that he'll never change. After losing his job, his friends, his money, and now heartbroken, Max continues to soak up his soul in alcohol. After drinking and wandering around city streets all night, he goes to a trash container, lies in it and falls asleep. 
He lies there until street cleaners come, close the container and start unloading it into a garbage truck, together with Max in it. Quickly realizing what's happening, Max calls 911, but he can't help himself but scream and tell the operator it's pressing him from all sides. We then see the garbage truck driving through the city, and unloading the garbage at a huge depot. His cell phone starts ringing. He's alive, he slowly starts moving his fingers and realizes what happened. With a smile on his face, he answers the phone. It's Julia. She got arrested and asks Max if he can pick her up. Without thinking, he says he'll be there. He can't take a smile off his face, as he knows life gave him another chance. He stands up, takes a deep breath, and starts running towards Julia, and his new life. 